Serpent and Dove called to us for multiple reasons. Number one, witches. Number two, witch hunters. And number three, and this is a big one for me, enemies falling in love. It is, as the kids say, my jam. And the book delivers on all of those things, manages to be plot driven, even while the romance does backflips in the background. The book takes place in a French-esque city, ruled by a king and his royal family, and more or less governed by the archbishop who controls the witch hunters, known as the Chaucers. Reed Diggory is one of the Chaucers, and has spent his whole life in the church. His life takes a turn when he runs into Louise, a witch who is in hiding from her mother and is scraping by a living in the city. Through a series of chance encounters, their lives get entangled. Eventually, Reed and Louise end up making a and I don't really know how I feel about this scene where they end up on a theater stage and it looks like Reed is trying to rape her. Reed is actually just trying to arrest Louise since she's acting suspicious, but by the way they crash on stage, it gives the audience the wrong idea. But what happens next is kind of cringeworthy if you're going from everybody else's perspective. The Archbishop attempts to smooth things over with the public. The Chaucers are supposed to be chaste and upstanding members of the community, after all. So he lies and says that Louise and Reed are married. So no crime, no foul. If she's his wife, she's his property. Louise agrees because she can't really pass up a chance to be living with the Chaucers and take the security that they provide her. Because Louise is on the run from her mother, the Queen of the Witches. See, the witches have a big problem. The land the kingdom was built on was once their magical homeland. And then the men came. And they thought it was a nice spot to put a castle or two and then kick the witches out. The witches have been justifiably pissed ever since. Louise's mother, the Queen of the White Witches, figured out that if she sacrificed her only daughter, she could make a spell that would not only kill the king, but all his descendants as well. So the queen wants to relieve Louise of her head, and Louise decided very last minute that she wanted to live. She ran away and has been hiding in the city for years, constantly afraid that her mother will catch up with her. Her only friend, up until the point where she marries Reed, is Coco a Red Witch. Of course, once Louise and Reed are married, their animosity towards each other does not stop. But slowly and surely, they realize that they might actually like one another. Cue the slow burn romance. As the two fall in love, they are slowly being swept up in Louise's mother's plot to end the royal line. I loved both Louise and Reed. Reed is angry at everything, and his anger was feeding me the entire time. Of the two of them, he's the one who wants the more traditional marriage. He's straight lace, buttoned up, and has a starched collar. All the fun stuff. Reed is the exact opposite of Louise, who takes great joy in taking whatever pleasures out of life that she can get. She drinks, she eats, she fucks, she swears like a sailor. She's a lot of fun. But even if she's considered wild by YA standards, she is actually a well-developed character who never strays into the manic pixie dream girl's territory. She is good for Reed, challenges his assumptions about the way things are and the way they could be. And he provides her with stability that she didn't know she needed and with the safety she definitely knew she needed. Even the supporting characters are well-developed. Coco is loyal and clever and brave, and Ansel, Reed's apprentice, is adorable and a little summer child who brings out the best in everyone. And even the supporting characters make decisions that have a decent impact on the plot, and that's real nice. The magic system that Louise adheres to provides a good amount of checks and balances, and provides a good opportunity for Louise to grow into her powers. The witches themselves, though, are portrayed as pretty monstrous, which is surprising considering the main character is a witch. In our opening scene, where we're introduced to the witches for the first time, it's when they ride into town, attacking the peasants and doing hideous things to them. Shooting people up in the air, plucking out children's eyes, turning them into clawed beasts, and, you know, generally being your worst nightmare. Well, in the back of your mind, you know that these are probably just extremists who are trying to reclaim their homeland. It does make it really difficult to empathize with them. And even when you see white witches later on, they don't do too much to endear themselves to you. They are all perfectly happy with sacrificing Louise for their goals, and they don't really seem to up on the empathizing with other people thing. You only ever really encounter three witches who aren't portrayed as monstrous, and one of them is Louise. You end up really seeing the show sir's point of view, even if you know that their organization is supposed to be bigoted and prejudiced. Now, when a woman was selling us this book, she sold it to us as filthy, and the closest thing to Sarah J Mass that she's ever found. And if you're like us, you're going, really? Filthy, you say. 
well, like, hold up, because I don't know what book this woman was reading, but filthy? Maybe for language. But sex scene-wise, it was okay. Was it shocking for a YA novel? Maybe a little bit. But it has nothing on A Court of Mist and Fury for sexual tension, or the graphicness of A Court of Frost and Starlight. So filthy? Maybe not. But it did get a little bit dusty once. Just the once, though. Serpent and Dove does have its problems, though. Especially near the end, the book gets a little shaky. A character gets introduced really late, probably could have been cut out entirely, and there are some plot choices that seem to come out of left field. But since it's impossible to talk about these things without spoilers, we'll leave that for now and tell you to check out our spoilers review if you want to know more. All in all, we both did enjoy the book. While some things weren't perfect, there was enough that we were interested in coming back and reading more. The romance is fun, the main characters and the sporting characters are really well developed, and there is enough of the world out there that we want to see more of it. I loved Angry Read. And I was a big fan of Feisty Louise. So if you have a chance and are looking for a good slow burn romance, check out Serpent and Dove. 